Yo, what is up guys? Ted here with The A-Team and today we're gonna to talk about the top five questions to ask before you buy that next lighting fixture. Now, before I kick this video off, yes, I work for Aperture. Yes, Aperture lights are great. And yes, the lights we're gonna show in this video as examples are Aperture lights. But these tips will apply to all different shapes and sizes of lights and all different price points, no matter where you are in your filmmaking career. So let's do this. Number one, what is the beam angle? Now, this question always gets overlooked and is absolutely one of the first you should be asking before you buy any fixture. Beam angle refers to the angle by which light into a fixture is emitted. And believe me, it makes a huge difference. Most traditional lights or LED panels will emit anywhere from a 25 to 55 degree beam angle, giving you a nice, fairly narrow spread of light. This is great for when you want to control your light and avoid having it spill all over the place, but not so great when you want to light a wide space or even 360 space. In these scenarios, a light with a wider beam angle will prove more handy. A light that has an 80 to 120 degree beam angle, for example, means that I can run that light directly up to something and make sure that I'm illuminating the entire space or silk that I want to shoot through. And if I'm lighting a 360 space, like a table scene, I'd probably rather have a light that has a 360 degree spread, like a bare bulb tungsten light, fluorescent bulb tube, china bowl, or space light. So why is beam angle so important? Well, deciding what beam angle you want means deciding how you want to use your new fixture. It dictates how you will use your new fixture and will help narrow that search. Number two, what is the output of the light? Now, this one might sound obvious. You want your light to be as big and as bright as possible, right? Wrong. Generally speaking, the brighter a light is, the larger the light is, and the more power it consumes. It's also more expensive, so take that into consideration. Do you need a light that can actually compete with the sun, or are you planning on using the kit indoors and at night? Likewise, if you're challenging the stars, you're gonna need a light with an output equivalent of at least 2K tungsten or more. Otherwise, you'll probably be fine with a set of 650 watt or 1K tungsten light equivalents. Now, remember that if you're buying tungsten, a usual household circuit will cap out at 2000 watts though. So unless you're getting fancy with your power distribution, make sure you keep your lights under that limit. If you're going LED though, you'll usually be fine. A 2K tungsten equivalent LED pulls only 300 to 330 watts of power, but even then it's still important to ask yourself, what do you need your lights to do prior to buying? Number three, what is the color temperature? Generally speaking, most lights will come in either 3200 Kelvin for tungsten or 5600 Kelvin for daylight. 3200 Kelvin is perfect for that warm lighting look or tungsten practicals, while 56 is designed to match sunlight. Tungsten can vary from 2000 Kelvin to 3200 Kelvin for an even warmer fire or Edison bulb color temperature. And likewise, daylight can vary from 5600 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin to mimic the look of an especially cloudy or fog filled day. But ask yourself first, what color temperature are you gonna be using most often with this fixture? Are you planning on matching it with practicals or tungsten fixtures? Or are you planning on matching sunlight and need your light to mimic that color temperature? The answer is both. It might be worth looking at a bi-color light that can change between each. Just remember that these lights will usually sacrifice 50% of the output since they're using half tungsten balanced lights with half daylight balanced lights. Finally, if you are planning on choosing to use a single color temperature, remember that when you gel from daylight to tungsten, you only lose one third of the output in comparison to when you gel from tungsten to daylight, where you have to sacrifice two thirds of the output. Number four, what is the color quality? Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this since we already did an entire episode on CRI and TLCIs, but especially with newer lighting fixtures like LEDs or HMIs, one big question to ask is what is the color quality of the light? CRI and TLCI will both measure how clean that color is when compared to a natural source. It's measured from one to 100, so just make sure you find a light that has a score of 95 or higher. And finally, number five, does the light make any noise? Or more specifically, is there a fan? Nowadays, I'm seeing a lot of traditional strobe manufacturers making continuous lights, but one place that they always mess up in is that they make something that can craft beautiful light, and then they stick a loud, noisy fan inside the fixture. This is fine for photography, but just remember that in cinematography, if you're gonna record audio, you're gonna need fixtures that stay quiet. So make sure you either look for lights that either have passive cooling methods, like heat sinks, or at the very least, a fan that is quiet or at least movable to keep your sound team happy. So there you have it. There's my top five questions to ask before you buy that next light. But obviously there are way, way, way more features to look for. So leave a comment below with one feature that you think everyone should look for in their next light. Best comment's gonna win a Mini 20C, which is our new single source light. So think of something creative, hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you guys next time.